Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday Night Rotor Talk Live. We'll be talking about the Autel Evo release, and we have a special, our special guest is uh, David uh, Kluge Tech Time. So we'll, he'll be on a board at 8 o'clock um, getting things set up. Hope everybody had a great Tuesday. Uh, it's wonderful weather here in Florida. It's, it rained today, kind of cooled things off a little bit. It's been in the 90s and 90% 90 humidity, so it's kind of kind of got a little better. So we do definitely appreciate that kind of stuff. I'll tell you that right now. That's absolutely great. Let me get the chat set up here. Welcome everyone, Steve, yes. Bill's getting ready by having a rub down and getting his hair fixed. <laughs> Steve Cross, you cracked me up. That's absolutely fantastic. I love that. Absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. All right, let's get going here. I think I got everything up here that we need. Right alongside, yeah, wow. That's that's pretty warm for you guys. That's it's definitely good weather. Joaquin, welcome tonight. Matt, welcome. Trevor, welcome. Crappy weather here, 38 mile an hour winds. Yikes, that's not good. That's not good for anything, Trevor. I'll tell you that right now. That's, ugh, yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, as I said, um, I needed to confirm, and, and David confirmed this morning, uh, actually late last night he'll be able to be on the show tonight and want to spend most of the show tonight we're going to be talking about the evo um just lots of news on that um chino welcome thank you thank you for joining tonight um yeah got lots of news we also found out today i guess the unique typhoon h plus was released eighteen hundred dollars and it flies all over my here's david Hey, Bill, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Boy, I tell you what, it's just like Joe News is just busting out left and right here. Oh, my goodness. It's like uh, Christmas in June, isn't it? Too seriously. bad I don't have a budget to be able to afford all of them. <laughs> that's the same for me. I, seriously. Oh seriously, that's where we're at. Mel, welcome to the show tonight. Um, no, I, I want to spend I want to spend some time talking about the um, the Evo. And, you know, I found out several things and I and I definitely wanted to have you on. Thank you. First of all, thank you for for being able to get on tonight. I know what it's like with kids and schedules and, and everything. So um, really appreciate your being able to make the time to get on here tonight. Oh, um, it's my pleasure. First thing I wanted to ask you was this. Um, now, I did find out that the app that was sent to the contest winners and those other ones who receive drones, that app is in beta. It's beta, not, yeah. you know, it, it's not a legit app. And, and I'm coming from, and I think, you know, I think you're in IT, correct? Uh, yep, that's right. Okay. So you know where I'm coming from when I say this, because I've been in IT my whole career. You know, we don't put anything out there unless it's working, all right? And my, my first point that I want to make, and I want to get your take in on it, was... I think Autel should have waited until that app was ready. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that they sent it out and allowed them to start publishing stuff before it was finalized and 100% and had all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and all that. I am uh, I can see them getting it out to them and saying, here, use it and give us feedback in these last few days. But I'm a little surprised that they chose to do it and, and let them start publishing stuff. You know, I would have thought maybe it'd be under an NDA. And then as soon as the day that it's officially available and ready to go, then, you know, then yeah. they can start publishing stuff. Yeah, you know, and, and, and to me, you know, you don't eat a half-baked cake, okay? And, you know, you don't fly a half-ready drone. I mean, you know, you know, you're you're limited with your functions and your functionality and everything. You know, it that just doesn't work. Yeah, it it it's like I said, it 
I can see them sending it out. I mean, you know, I work, I've worked for a software company for a long time and, you know, we would send out stuff to, to customers, but, you know, with the understanding that it's beta, I'm not sure that the people who won their, their drones, those two people understood that they were going to be getting beta software. Maybe, maybe I, you know, I'm reading something into that, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Well, one of the other things too, and, and I think this is huge, and I know you talked about it, and I forget which part of your two-part series. Um, you, the communications protocol was 2.4 and um, 900 megahertz. And 900 megahertz. Okay. Yeah. Well, you heard the 900 megahertz isn't on there, and I'm like, okay, you know, I came, from, I come from, also come from a background. I'm a ham, ham radio operator, and you know, I know about frequencies and waves, and I know that 900 megahertz, and I know you talked about this. You know, it penetrates through walls, through buildings, through trees, and things like that. So this is really going to greatly reduce the range. But what I find really odd was, and somebody, one of my subscribers pointed it out to me, was that on the FCC grant application, it had both of those down there. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly why they chose to, to take that out at the last minute. I mean, that was certainly in there on the documentation up until just very recently on their website. Uh, days ago, it was still on there. I, I know it was. I saw it on there. So that's a, that's a really recent thing. They probably took that off the day of the announcement is, is my guess. And I know that it was, it was something that Jacob, Jacob talked about uh, when I did to have that interview that you were re referencing was the 900 megahertz as well. And I think that, you know, a lot of people utilized 5.8 gigahertz on other drones like the Mavic Air and the Spark and um, other drones as well. And having those two different bands, you know, 2.4 gigahertz is, is utilized for a lot of stuff. I mean, uh, I, I believe, you know, microwaves actually run at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, a lot of, you know, phones and a lot, just a lot of stuff out there runs on that 2.4 gigahertz. And so it's, 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 you know, fairly prone to interference if you're yeah. trying to, to go a long ways away, you know? And so a lot of people are, do rely on 5.8 gigahertz just because it's less congested. Not that it is better for going further, uh, you know, close ranges, it, it can handle more traffic, but it doesn't, like you were talking about, the higher the, the, the spectrum you go, the less uh, it's able to penetrate through things. It, it gets attenuated much easier. Yeah, well, you know, and Steve Carpenter, you were right. The 2.4, and as you were, were talking about, you know, it's a really crowded band. There is so much out there that uses that. And, you know, I'm out there, I'm flying, say I'm flying an Evo, you know, and I'm near somebody that's using 2.4 and then all of a sudden I get signal loss, you know. Um, I think, you know, again, you know, why they did this, nobody has been able to answer this. Um, I didn't see anything from Autel on this. And I know those that have gotten units to test, they can't call them reviews and I don't know why. Um, they don't know either. Nobody knows, nobody can seem to answer this question. And, and I think, you know, again, Going back to my first point, you know, if it's not 100% ready, what would have killed them to have waited a couple of weeks, you know? Yeah, it's, it's tough. I'm, I mean, some of the rumors that I've heard, and I don't know, you know, outside of the U.S., I know 900 megahertz is an, is an open spectrum here in the U.S., but I believe that outside of the U.S., uh, you can't use 900 megahertz for, for, you know, in the same way. And so I've heard, you know, rumors that because they're trying to pursue eventually outside of the U.S. Right now, their focus, you know, initially is selling into the U.S., of course. But, uh, you know, I think they want to eventually go outside of the U.S. And, um, you know, I think 900 megahertz isn't allowed out yeah. there. But, you know, <clears throat> quite honestly, 5.8 gigahertz isn't allowed uh, in Europe as well. And that's why uh, people with the Spark have had some connection problems. And there's the whole uh, OTG thing and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff is because of, the 5.8 gigahertz limitation. So, you know, they could have chose to go that route if if that was the issue, you know, use uh, geolocation to determine, you know, are you in the US or not? And if so, you know, enable 900 megahertz. If not, you know, disable it. But, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the reason or not. You know, like you said, I, I don't know that anybody outside of Autel actually knows the answer to, to why they chose to go that route. Yeah, you know, one of the other things too, and 
and I, and I know a couple of those that have been given units to, to look at um, talked about the gimbal. There's a tilt with the gimbal. Have you heard anything about that? I saw one video, I think it was on Facebook, maybe earlier today or yesterday, where uh, they had uh, the gimbal was tilted. I, actually, I think it was original Dobo uh, maybe was talking about that. Uh, yeah. Maybe not, but, uh, um, you know, you can calibrate that, and I think that uh, he'd mentioned something about that in his video um, about that. But that's that's one of the items, if you go back and look at the, the video that uh, uh, I did a month or so ago, with the footage, you know, the, the two things that everybody talked about, that footage that Jacob captured for me, mm -hmm. and I included my videos, two things everybody said were props in view and the, the horizon, the tilted horizon. So, yeah. Um, um, what, and, and I think Dob, original Dobo may have said this, um, that there, he talked, I think it was, oh God, I forget who it ought to tell one of their, um, one of their um, customer, senior customer service reps said that they're going to have a firmware update and you know and, and and i hate to say this and you know i'm i'm ha i want autel to succeed okay i want to preface this you know them succeeding and parrot succeeding and you know I'll even go to unique you know that's going to push dji and that's a good thing for all of us but i think again you know if this was a known issue this was something that wasn't hidden and here they released them out to their distributors they get them out to the two contest winners and, you know, it has this issue, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, one of those things is that, um, you know, whenever you buy a brand new DJI drone, pretty much the first thing you have to do is update the firmware, right? Update so, the firmware. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, like I said, I, I've worked for a software company most of my adult life, and uh, you know, those guys are writing code and fixing stuff right up to the very last second. And that's the great thing about having, you know, updatable firmware and updatable software and so on, mm -hmm. is that you can update it really easily. And so, you know, they they still haven't officially released it, right? They 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 have right. given two to the, the 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 contest winners, and then a few, you know, others have somehow got their hands on them. Um, but uh, you know they aren't officially available through the official channels yet, and so I wouldn't be surprised if if they release a firmware and a software update on the day that the people are actually getting them in their hands. Yeah, I think you're right, and you know, and one of the other things too, um, you know, and and this is from everything that that I've seen as well. You know, you talked about um, the propellers, and I know original Dobo said. Well, yeah, he had his up to speed and it's going to tilt a little and, you know, he gets out on the Phantom 4 Pro and and I understand everything he's saying about that. But I also watched and I don't know if you saw this. Um, there was uh, Autel went to uh, Marine Corps base in New Orleans and yep. they and I, I'm, I'm friends with Georgie Hernandez McLeod. And, you know, if you saw some of those videos again, like you like in your you saw the props in there you know and they weren't you know they weren't going out full gun and all this stuff so you know oh that's kind of <laughs> you know you, that's the last thing when you're videotaping something yeah you know you don't want to see those props in there you know i know billy kyle talked about this you just don't want to see them yeah i agree i mean you know in in autel's defense for the the videos that i did a month ago or so that was with the prototype unit that was uh not the final design you know they uh jacob told me that they're they're changing the design of the arms and the propellers and you know firmware of course is not uh completed back then as well and so you know hopefully hopefully when they finally release it there will be you know less of that you know uh, like like original dobo mentions you know if, if you are pushing it you're you're going to get propellers and in a lot of the drones you know spark mavic air mavic pro all of them are going to get a little bit but you know you you should have to be pushing pretty hard for that to happen so i guess yeah you know, we'll see we'll see how prevalent it really becomes you know i i know um ken original dobo um he had another he had a q a video and one of the things he talked i think he talked about i think it was in that um was about the color and how it needs to be adjusted um you know i looked at some of the shots that he did now i know where he i know where he lives because he like he lives about 45 minutes from me and he tends to go out to this nice marshy area and, and you know i don't 
I, I, I don't con I, he's he's much braver than I because you know there's <laughs> gators and snakes and all that kind of good stuff yeah. in Florida. But you know, it's usually like right now we've had so much rain, everything is just like I mean green, green, green. Yeah. I mean you can't you can't underestimate that. And the video that he shot, you know, it was like a pale green, and he talked about them having to do some kind of adjustment for that. You know, I hope the, you know that a firmware update is going to fix that because that could be you know you know especially for somebody you know if they're not familiar with the, navigating the menu and having to go in and adjust the bal color balance and everything. Yeah, you know, that's a lot. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen those videos, so I can't really speak necessarily to to that. But um, uh, yeah, you really want to have good color right out of the box. You know, I think. I think that'll put off a lot of people if you if you don't just have you know right right away you know most people don't want to mess with that right I mean yeah. you know I'm I'm certainly not a, a pro photographer uh, my wife is and she's really good at all that color stuff and whatever but you know what I'm I'm awful at that kind of stuff I'm good at the technical you know geeky stuff but I'm awful when it comes to the artistic <laughs> part of this you know? yeah that's kind of like where I'm where I'm coming from as well and you know um. It's it's real. What what I think is real interesting about all this, David, is you know when I got my Mavic Pro, all right. Here's what I did: I charged the batteries, I charged the controller, I put the SD card in, I did a firmware update, but it didn't need one, and all I had to do was calibrate the compass, go, and I recorded my first video, and then I looked at it on my computer, and I was just like my jaw dropped because I didn't touch a thing. I, I used the stock settings. I didn't didn't adjust, and I shot it in 4K. I mean, I didn't know at that point enough to switch it out of 4K to 1080p, and yeah. it was just it was out of the box. You know, yeah. it's like okay, years ago I bought, and this was when it was rare. I got a sharp 65 inch color television. All right, yeah. I had a Sony, and um, you know, and I'll tell you what, it was just it was out of the box. It was not right. The colors weren't right. And it was good old H.H. H. Craig, which may they rest in peace, <laughs> yeah. um, which I really liked. I liked having them as a store. I said, you know what, guys? It, I had it two days. I said, this isn't working. Yeah. They said, you want to get a Sony? And that's what I did. I ended up getting a Sony again because yeah. the color was right. And here's the thing with that. You know, I hope this is an easy fix because, you know, most people like me, you know, I'm like you. Um, you know, I'm not like your wife. I'm not a professional photographer, videographer. I mean, you know, I know enough to edit videos and I know enough yeah. to get some to get some brightness or some, you know, contrast and that kind of thing. But yeah. getting into that other stuff, you know, that's something like for a professional like your wife. But, you know, out of the box, I want that to work, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to reserve judgment on, on that kind of stuff until till the final uh, product comes out and we really see, you know, how things are uh, really looking. Uh, yeah. You know, so. I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm going to be optimistic about it, and uh, uh, like I said, I haven't seen the, the the particular video that you were talking about in in regards to color, so I can't can't really comment. But I, yeah. I think they'll do pretty well. I think uh, you know the image processing that they have in it. Uh, I think it's the Amberella Signal processor mm -hmm. or image processor, which is the same thing that uh, uh, the Anafi I think has as well. And somebody told me today about that processor. Um, you know, it's it could do 120 FPS, but it's limited by the Sony sensor. OK. Yeah. And, it, you know, it can't it can't do that because of the Sony sensor, which makes sense. But it's interesting that it's capable of being able to do something like that. I thought that was real interesting. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm I'm like you. I want I want to tell to succeed. I want them to do well. Uh, I think. And, and this is the thing with a lot. A lot of people are very anxious to get one right off the bat and, and get them out there. And for me, I like to, I'd like to let people go through, you know, yeah. maybe a month or so of a cycle and see, you know, because really you can do a wonderful testing with your, with your R and D and everything at your company, but the real testing ends up coming when it comes to us and oh, absolutely. Out in the real world, you, you know that. So, you know, that's why, I think so. I think they're going to get a lot of sales probably a month or two down the road because they'll see people, you know, that have worked through these problems, you know, and it's good to see 
it's good to see these videos like from Dobo. Um, so we can have an idea of where some of the weak points are right now. And, you know, and, you know, and being able to two months down the road, say, you know what, this is working. It's great. Getting 30 minutes of runtime. Um, you know, this is fantastic. This is where we're at. Yeah. You know, I'm always one of those guys. I, I love to be on the bleeding edge. Unfortunately, my uh, my pocketbook doesn't like to be there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so that's that that's the only problem for me. I, I love testing out new things and playing around, and uh, uh, you know I've done a lot of that stuff from a professional career in terms of you know playing around with stuff and trying to break stuff and and see how things work. And you know as as a little kid, I was always that little kid, you know, wanting to know what every little knob on the on mom and dad's you know radio did and all that kind of stuff. And so. You know, I love new shiny toys and being able to play, play around with them. I just wish I had the budget to be able to, or or somebody to send every one of these to me, right? I got to make more of these videos to, <laughs> to convince these guys that uh, you know it's a good good idea to send me free stuff. <laughs> well, just just to let you know, um, I had I had been a thorn in, in Autel's side, emailing them about getting a test unit, and here's what they told me. They said one of their criteria is you have to have 100,000 subscribers. And I said, okay, I, I said 90 plus percent of those that review drones that I know are under 100,000. I mean, Kelly from Ready, Said Drone, he has like 90,000. But everybody yeah. else, Billy Kyle has like 50,000. Um, yeah. You're like at 5,000. I'm like at 2,000, three, approaching 3,000. Dobo's like at 3,000. You know, it's like... You know, none of us, you know, are, are in that realm. And, and I kind of like, and they sent me a real nice reply back and said, you know, we'll, we'll look forward to you next time, you know, that kind of thing. But um, the thing is, and what I found out, um, and I talked to Billy Kyle about this, is he said, the earlier you start with something like that, the better and the be yeah. persistent. And to give them your stats. And that's what I did. I gave them like my YouTube stats. Yeah. Um, you know, um, and the other thing that's important is to have a um, social media presence like on Facebook yeah. and Twitter. And yeah. I know you do. And that, and that's great. And I do as well. And these are kind of things that will help. So, you know, I'm looking forward to maybe hopefully sometime coming up, you know, maybe getting a surprise email and saying, you know, you've been selected to receive a test unit kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Or yeah. my wife's going to have to catch me as I fall down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. also wanted to talk, and I don't know if you had a chance to see it. I put out a video last night. It's real short. It's only about two minutes, and it was called um, DJI, It's Your Turn. And basically, the thrust of that video, what I talked about, David, was, you know, you know, Parrot came out with theirs. Um, you know, Attel announced theirs, and we didn't know about Unique until today. But, you know, I said, DJI, It's Your Turn. But you know, on your time frame, And, you know, I just want to get your thoughts as to when you think DJI is going to release something. Boy. Yeah, that's a difficult one. I We, we talked about this a little bit on uh, the, the live chat we did uh, last week. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I mentioned was that I think that the DJI maybe as a company has, has maybe matured a little bit. Uh, from where they were two years ago when they, they uh, you know, just haphazardly decided to launch the Mavic Pro right after the Karma came out. And I think that, mm -hmm. um, I think the, the, like we talked about, they've learned from that. And so they're not going to go with it until they're ready. They've got plenty of uh, stock built up. You know, they don't want to be in that situation again where they've sold something that they can't fulfill. Like, right. they, like they did with the Mavic Pro. Right. So I think that um, I think that it'll be interesting to see when it comes. I'm not sure that that all these products that have just come out are really going to drive them necessarily to to um, to to force something out. Right. right. Um, you know, if you look at the the Paradinafi, right? It's uh, you know, it's 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 cool old drone. It's got some some cool features. I think the the, the gimbal, you know, being able to look up is really kind of the, the big selling point on that, right? The rest of it, mm -hmm. you know, it's got a really good camera, right? The 20, 21 megapixel camera, I think, 4K 60. So the camera itself has got some really cool stuff. 
you know, a lot of people are not going to buy it because it doesn't have obstacle avoidance. And, you know, there's there's some things there, right? I think Parrot, right. you know, people kind of look at Parrot as, you know, they're kind of a down market type of, of, of company. And then you've got the Autel Evil. A lot of people are, are uh, you know, kind of upset that it took them so long, so long. And I'll put my little air quotes around that so long, <laughs> you know, to come out with it. Um, you know, but I think they're they're going to sell a lot of those. But you know, is there anything really in the Autel Evo that really you don't get? You know, if you go buy a Mavic Air or a Mavic Pro at this point, right? You right. know, the the Evo is kind of like the 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 kind of combination of those two, right? You kind of get right. the, the distance of the Mavic Pro, and but you get the the 4K 60 and the newer technology that that the Mavic Air has, right? So and and you get the the time, the flight time, the 30 minutes of the mm-hmm. Mavic Pro. So it's kind of the what uh, you know. A lot of people were you know kind of think back to the springtime. You know all the rumors that were going around about the Mavic Pro 2. Oh, it's coming out at the end of March, and you know all the all that kind of stuff. If you go back and you look at all the the um, kind of rumors around what the Mavic Pro 2 what was going to be. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much the Evo minus a one-inch sensor, right? You got yeah. the 4K60. You got a redesigned uh, gimbal that's stronger. I mean, that's one of the the kind of weak points with the Mavic Pro is the 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 gimbal just kind of hanging out there. It just looks so flimsy. You know what I mean? And um, uh, you've got the distance. You've got you know a lot of the stuff that they really were rumors of what the Mavic Pro 2 was going to be back in the spring, minus mm-hmm. the one-inch sensor. It's the Evo, right? But, right. you know, I, I, I don't know that the, the Evo really pushes the bar ahead that where DJI is going to say, oh, well, we're going to lose a ton of sales if we don't get the, you know, new generation out there. I think I think they've still got a little bit of time. So, I, you know, when are they going to do it? <laughs> Like I said the other day, as soon as I say, <laughs> as soon as I say, you know, it's not going to be for six months, they're going to drop it tomorrow, right? Or, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, I, 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 I really don't know, but I, I think that they're gonna, they're gonna do it right this time. They're not going to rush it, uh, and, and I think that they are going to come out with something that is going to be, you know, a definite step above everything else that's, re- that's available at that price point and that kind of, you know, the foldable 4K type of drone. I think it's, it, you know, it's going to be a definite step up, you know, from what's out there. I agree. You know, I, I, I agree with everything that you said, David, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that I harped on was with the, um, you know, when the Mavic Pro was originally released, the whole, you know, not enough inventory fiasco and, you know, DJI learns from something like that. And, you know, the other thing is, and I think, you know, this too, is the Mavic Air is selling very well right now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's been no drop in sales and I have a Mavic Air group and I get at least maybe four to five people joining that every day. I'm almost at 500 right now. And that started from zero. That started from scratch and I keep getting more people. Yeah. My Spark group, I have about 700 there. But with this, I mean, it keeps growing and the Spark yeah. does too. The Spark is still so, because they have discounted it so much. You know, people are buying it left and right, you know, for, for a nice drone, something to use. But, you know, the Mavic Air is selling well in DJI right now. They and I think I think you said this. They don't really need to do anything. I mean, they're in a good position right now um, sales wise. No, I, I agree. I mean, if, if you look at any social media, you will see whether it's the DJI forums, you know, the official DJI forums, you look at Facebook groups, you look at uh, any social media out there and there are people buying all of the drones, all of the DJI drones every single day and coming and saying, Hey, I just got this. I, I'm seeing p- people posting pictures of their new drones all the time. It, and um, so I don't think the DJI is hurting. Um, and whatever, whatever they come out with is just going to take away from, from the sales that of the, the, the people are already going to be buying, um, you know, what they're already going to be buying a spark or a Mavic air or a Mavic pro or a phantom, you know, that already exists. And like I'd mentioned, to you last week coming out with a new product is really really expensive for a company Mm -hmm. the training they have to do for all their customer service staff and engineers to be able to support it the tooling that they have to do to 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 make it the engineering the the documentation it's really really expensive to come out with something new and if they're selling the heck out of what they already have 
and and there's not a competitor out there that's a step above where they are why not just keep keep the money rolling in and not not spend more right exactly you know and you know i i did see somebody had pointed out to me i guess i don't know if it was here over in the uk um steve cross maybe some of you guys can enlighten me from over the uk but they they did another discount on the mavic pro but you know it's like it still sells well even without that discount you know it, it's just it's just one of those things and the other thing is, and I think you know you know this, David. DJI, I think they pride themselves on on being the best, and not only not only in terms of the product that they deliver, but the quality that they deliver too. And I think we got a peek into it, you know, when we saw those little peaks inside the factory, that little video that I posted, you know, getting to see how you know how precision it is, and you know how precise it is, and they do they do amazing work, and they're not. You know, like I said, and the whole thing is boils down to it, and that's what my video was about last night. Was you know they're not in a rush. They don't need to be rushed. And and I think, like you, my guess, and this is just a guess, is two months. But I think I probably told you I did an in-depth look at everything from the Phantom One up to the present. And David, there's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't. There's no. Oh, it's it's 90 days here, 180 days here, 200. No, there's nothing like yeah. that. You know, there's no rhyme or reason for that. So, you know, DJI is not on. They're on their timetable. They're not on Autel's timetable or Parrot's timetable or Unique's timetable. And with that, I'm gonna just I'm gonna talk close out and talk about the Unique um, Typhoon H Plus. I know you did a video on it today. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I think I think it looks like a pretty cool drone. I think the uh, and I pointed this out in the, in my video. I think my my one concern and 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 it's the comment that really just uh, from the time it was published, people started commenting right away on on my video about was the one mile range. You're going to pay eight nineteen hundred U.S. dollars essentially for a drone that has the same range as the Spark, right? Mm -hmm. And so where where you can spend that same money and buy a Phantom 4 Pro and be going out four four miles, right? Is the is the documented range. Now, you know, some people start, you know, start saying, well, you should never be going that far. And and you're right, you should never be going that far, right? You should be following the rules for for wherever you're flying at, which in most places is visual line of sight. Um, but I think what that range really boils down to when I look at that range, to me, it really, I, I'm never going to be going four miles unless I do a, a, a range test for one of these videos. But for, for under normal circumstances, I'm never going to be going out four miles. Right. And I'm probably not going out a mile, to be honest with you, for, oh, for, yeah. for anything. I'm, I'm keeping it really close so that I can keep it. You know, I don't want to lose my drone, right? So I want to keep it in the visual line of sight and I want to follow the rules. But I think what it, what it does tell you is how well the, the, the signal is going to be when you're in a high interference area, right? So that's been one of the concerns with the Spark, you know, as people trying to use it in urban settings where there's a lot of interference and having, you know, signal problems, right? Where, mm -hmm. you, where with OcuSync and uh, Mavic Pro, you know, you don't have those same sort of problems, right? So you can right. be, you know, 800 yards away or whatever, 800 feet away, and you're pretty much sure that you're gonna have a good signal, even though you're not far away. But with the Spark, you know, as great as it is, I love my Spark. I use it all the time. But when I, where I fly at, I generally don't have a whole lot of problems. But you read any forum or Facebook page about the Spark, and people are always struggling kind of with that when they're in a high interference area. And my, my concern with the, 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 the Typhoon H Plus is, you know, if they're documenting a mile as the, as the maximum range, well, what's that going to mean in a high interference area, right? Right. Um, and you know, but it's got some great, it's got some great specs. Other than that, right? I love the fact that it's got a gimbal that can do a full 360, right? Those legs get out of the way. Mm -hmm. It's got the one-inch sensor. And some people say, well, is the one-inch sensor really that important? It kind of is, right? It's one of those things that, mm -hmm. that, generally speaking, bigger is better when it comes to camera sensor. Uh, it allows you allows the camera to be better in high dy dynamic scenarios where you know you got low light and bright lights, right? Which is almost every day when you're flying with a drone, right? You right. got you got the sky uh, is really bright, and you got you know uh, shadows from trees and buildings, and so you know having that that sensor helps it to to kind of deal with those those you know very dynamic high high contrast or high differences in exposure 
and um, it also helps just in in low light right a lot of us like to to, to take videos you know at dusk and dawn right and mm -hmm. um you know and and if you have to bump up that iso really high well you're going to start getting that graininess in in your videos or your pictures and that one inch sensor is going to help that uh quite a bit oh yeah you're right about the one inch sensor you know and and one of the other things is and i don't know if you've, you've watched any of his videos um i believe he's in canada captain drone yeah um, I, love, I love captain drone yeah he has a, he has a unique typhoon and you know i watched several of his videos on that and and you know it is it is a very versatile drone but you have to understand you know and that's the thing that i tell people i don't know about you but i get quite a few emails each week from people you know asking advice on a drone to buy you know and one of the things you know that i ask you know is you know, things that are important is range important to you is battery life important to you you know um are you going to use this professionally or personally you know and with the range thing you know that's one of the questions that people need need to know you know you're buying an 18 1900 drone you need to understand you know this is going to have a limited range but you know and i think donnie big flyer 77 i think he put it well you know he says he doesn't even go out more than a quarter of a mile from wherever he goes for his yep. for his his shoots and i think realistically you're right with what you said i think the only thing for me with that is interference you know i'm going to make sure that you know it's a solid mile. It's not a sketchy mile. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, being able to communicate with your drone. And I know um, Billy Kyle, I, I don't know if it was on Dobo's show last night or not, but he talked about um, he went, he, he had, he had flown out at his girlfriend's place out in, out in Connecticut over, over in the ocean. And he ended up getting a loss of signal and he was waiting for it to come back. Now this is what the Phantom 4 Pro and you know, it, it's just like that's an agonizing thing because if you're out there, if you're flying and it's like, boom, your signal's lost. It's just like Billy was saying, well, I hope it's returning to home kind of a thing. You know, you don't want to have to do that. And I think for me, that's the thing with unique. I think, you know, I want that mile. I want I want a solid mile. I don't want, you know, 4000 feet. And then all of a sudden I'm just seeing a grainy, fuzzy picture on yeah. my on my transmitter. But I think all in all, um, you know, I watched I watched your review. It was it was a good review, and and I think I agree with you. You know, you know this this thing about needing more than a mile because you know what I've been flying a year and a half, almost two years, and yeah, do you really need that? I mean, I did some distance tests early on just to just to see with the Mavic Pro, and it worked. And the distance test worked. Yeah. But you know, you need to understand something. You know you you not really you're really not going to need that because you'll get to a place you want to shoot something you're going to be right there i mean you're you're not going to be you know it's not going to be a mile or two or three miles away you're going to be right where you need to shoot or close to it and be able to go up and put your drone up you know and, and i don't know about you david but that's the way it is for me you know it's like when i'm when i'm shooting you know my, my joy flights are going over my over my the lake in my backyard I, mean, I absolutely love doing that. And yeah. what? You know, it's a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand at the most away, so I can still maintain line of sight of it. But that's it. That's all I do. I mean, it's yeah. you know, unless I go to a park or something like that, you know, where it, it may be, you know, like two thousand feet or so, trying to get some good shots. But other than that, you know, this thing about more than a mile, I mean, it's nice. And and, and I think for me. I want to have, like I said, you know, if it's going to be a mile, I want a solid mile. If it's going to be four miles, I want four solid miles. And I think, you know, having the OcuSync now on the Phantom 4 Pro V2.0 is yeah. going to be tremendous. Yeah, um, absolutely. 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 Um, and yeah, I, and I think uh, and I think the big thing on the V2 is the dynamic uh, channel selection as well. Mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the, that that's really going to help out there. Well, you know, one of the things that's real funny, you know, bringing up the, the V2 is I haven't heard a lot about it from people. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of people getting those props and I gave away some props and Mel got his um, on my giveaway. But I haven't heard a lot of people talk about getting it or buying it and, and what it's like. And, and I'm really interested because I haven't seen a lot of people review it or reviews on it. Have you? No, I've not. I I think maybe it's just one of those things that I think the the market is moving more towards the smaller drones, right? And it's really mm -hmm. the 
it's really the really dedicated people that are buying the phantoms right yeah. so so you know a couple of years ago the phantom was what you had to buy right if you wanted a if you wanted a drone you had to buy a phantom you know that but but today you got so many options of smaller things and you know if i'm just a, a you know a, a guy wanting to mess around with the drone and take some cool videos and take some cool pictures well you know i don't want to have to lug around a back a big backpack or a big case that's just that so i think maybe the the market on that higher end is is much smaller as part of it and you know the the, the number of people in that uh realm you know a lot of people already have phantoms right and yeah. i don't oh, think yeah. that the i don't think that the, the the story is compelling to go you know make that jump from an existing phantom to that to the the the, the v2 um, you know, the, the videos that I've seen te where the, the, the audio tests, you know, it, it, it seems like it's maybe a little bit quieter, quieter and it's a little maybe a deeper sound and, you know, a little less buzzy. But I don't know that it really makes a huge difference. And so I think, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I just think that it's, you know, it's, it's if you're wanting a phantom, right, and you yeah. don't have one, you know, great. But, uh, you know, I think most of the people that, that can afford a Phantom and are doing reviews and stuff already have them, right? Billy Kyle already has a Phantom. Exactly, right? yeah. So, so he's not going to go sell that and go buy a new one. Yeah, that's exactly right? what he says. I mean, so I think, you know, he I, said the same thing too, David. You know, he's not going to, I mean, he doesn't, you know, the, the, the OcuSync is nice, but, you know, the benefits, he can get the benefits from the quieter prop. I mean, you know, and that's a, that's a $20 thing. Um, you know, to be able to do that. Um, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here, okay? If you had uh -oh. the if you had the funds for, and, and let's just say, let's just say a Mavic 2 and a Phantom 5 come out this year. And this is a question I um, was wanting to wanting to ask you. Um, you know, with all these drones that have come out, and you had the funds, and funds weren't an option, which drone would you get, and why? You know, I, I've never flown a Phantom. And I've I, I I would love to have a Phantom, right? I, there's just something about it, right? The classic design. When when I think when most people kind of initially think of you know kind of a camera drone or whatever, they think of you know you, you just picture the Phantom, right? Um, and maybe that's changing now, maybe maybe not, but uh, you know I yeah I just I I think that one in sensor, right? The the quality of video you can get with that. Um, the, the, my only concern of course is the size, right? right. <laughs> but, but I've got a Mavic Air and I've got a, uh, you know, I've got a, a, a Spark as well. And so, you know, if I'm, if I'm really trying to, if I'm trying to step up and, and really want some, you know, I'm, I'm going to step up to a Phantom probably. Now in, in the real world with real money and stuff, um, you know, I, I don't know that that would happen. Uh, you know, this year anyways, for me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think a Phantom would be awesome. I, one of the things that, that, that I really enjoy is uh, uh, some of the videos, videos of people kind of messing around. I think Ken Heron did a video where he had some sort of attachment and he was dropping stuff and, you know, those legs hanging down off the Phantom, mm -hmm. you know, allow you to kind of do some kind of kind of fun and and quirky things you know the the, the maybe are a bit more difficult with the uh, the foldable drones well and, um kelly from ready set drone he attached and if you get a chance to look at this he used and i think it's called loon cube um yeah and he attached one of their um connectors and he put a 360 camera yeah. on it yeah that, that's the other yeah, thing i want to get crazy awesome yeah that's that's one of the things that i've uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get, hopefully soon, is a 360 camera. I think that those are sweet um, playing around with. I wasn't sold on the 360 cameras uh, for anything when people were posting their videos in 360 format where you had to sit there and you had to, you know, move around mm -hmm. or you had to, you know, with your finger or your mouse, you had to, to, to rotate around. But I like the, I think... Um, I'm not sure which brand calls it this, but it's the over capture, right? Where basically it's recording the 360 environment. And then when you go back and you can, you can basically say where you want it to look uh, and, and capture that for your video that you're going to use, right? So um, as you're recording, 
you know, it's capturing the whole environment. But then when you go back in post production, you can then say, okay, well, I want to look here and I, you know, follow this or whatever. And so you're not getting the full 360 view, um, you know, and, and putting that into your video. Mm -hmm. but you're, you know, you don't have to worry about, okay, do I need to be pointing it back at myself? Do I need to be pointing it over that way? Is, is uh, you know, this scene over here or to my right really cool? You know, with the 360, you can just capture the entire environment. And then as you're, as in, when you're in post-production, then you can choose what you want to actually show the viewer. Oh, right? yeah. I'm, I'm not a fan of the, the watching a, a 360 video. When I see somebody post a 360 video, I, I generally just skip right past it. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. But I like just what, I love what Kelly did. I mean, that yeah, was absolutely crazy good. I'm going to yeah. close with this. Um, I'm a little late to the Tello game, but um, Ian Jones, one of my subscribers from the UK who came to Orlando and visit, long story short, we had a um, – we got to meet he and his wife and daughter it was wonderful. And they're coming back in September. They're here twice a year, all the time from the south, Southeastern England. Wonderful guy. Anyway, he, I gave him a gift of a, um, and Steve Carpenter, thank you for that gift. It was a tablet holder for Spark Mavic Pro and uh, Mavic Air. And he's going back, he's getting another Spark again because he misses it so much. Um, but the other thing was, you know, with the Tello, my wife absolutely now you know she's adverse to she doesn't want to crash the mavic and touch yeah. anything you know that kind of thing but she loved it i have a review video coming out later this week on it and she absolutely loved it i i never i've never seen her enjoy it so much and you know I, for now i'm keeping it because i she saw it do the flips and the circle yeah. and the circle and the 360 and all this she just yeah. loved it and you know, and I saw your video, and it was a great review video. It was it looked like it was a cold day when you did that outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, the one thing that it, it impressed me was, you know, I know because it really is not a stable drone platform, even in a moderately and not, not really a light wind. But I tell you what, I was impressed, even though it's a 720p camera, that yeah. camera absolutely impressed me, David. It really did. The the still pictures I think are, are really good, you know, for for a five megapixel camera. I think mm -hmm. they're really good. The videos are kind of it depends on your signal, right? Because it's sending it back to your phone, and and that's the only way it's recording. And I really wish they'd had a an SD card in that, and it would yeah, be, it would that that would be really cool. I think that's their one miss on the Tello. I yeah. love my Tello. I love playing around with it. I think that it playing around with it helps make me a better. Um, uh, pilot. Uh, mm -hmm. I, every once in a while, we'll go to the park and uh, I'll fly it through the the kids' um, playgrounds, right? Try and fly it through the slide and underneath <laughs> and through stuff and whatever, doing things that I wouldn't think of doing with with my Spark or my Mavic Air, or, you know, a more expensive drone. But you know, if you run into the side, I, I keep the, the the propeller guards on uh, on my Tello, which I'd never think, you know, I I don't know that I've ever really had my propeller guards on my other DJI drones but um you know i keep them on my tello and you know if you bump it in the slide and you know so what you know it's, yeah, oh, yeah. But it's a lot oh, yeah. of fun a lot of fun trying to see if it, it, it is it is absolutely yeah it is absolutely a lot of fun we're gonna wrap things up and um you know i want to thank you so much i know i kind of hit you last minute with this but you know with all of this going on i thought it would be fantastic to have you on again to talk about this um and guys here's here's a shameless plug if you have, if you've been under a bushel and haven't seen light in weeks, okay, you need you need to subscribe to Kluge Tech Time. David does fantastic videos, and if you want, and to me, it's he's the I think he's the one of the number one people on the Spark and the Mavic Air. He really he does he he's a he does deep dives into things. You need to go out there. You need to subscribe to him if you haven't yet. Please do so you'll be doing yourself a fantastic favor. David does fantastic with his videos. Absolutely love his channels. I watch every video that he comes out with. I'm thankful for lunchtime because that's what I do at lunchtime is watch <laughs> videos that good people come out with. So yeah. um, David, you know, we'll definitely do this again. Loved having you on tonight. Thank you so much again for joining. Thank your family for parting with you for about 45 minutes here tonight. Well, we enjoyed having you on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, just everything guys thank you so much for tonight um again just to kind of wrap things up 
you know, we kind of talked about the Evo tonight, um, you know, and some of the shortcomings that we're seeing, but yet hopefully, you know, Autel's going to step it up and get things taken care of by the time it releases. Um, you know, we're also, you know, we also talked about, you know, um, DJI and what could be coming from them and talked about that. If you haven't, I put out a video about that. So you may want to go check that out. Um, Mel, thank you so much for, and everybody, thank you so much for showing up. And then we talked about the unique Typhoon H plus and, you know, David did a video on that, which was fantastic. And, you know, talked about some of the, um, you know, limitations of that, but yet, you know, it's still a great drone. It shoots in 360, the gear come up. I mean, you know, if you want to do that with, with a DJI product, you have to go to Inspire and spend four or $5,000. So I um, want to thank everybody. If you're watching live tonight, thank you all for your wonderful participation. I appreciate that. If you're watching on the rebroadcast, um, you know, thank you again for watching tonight. If not, you definitely need to need to get um, um, on here. We're here every Tuesday night at eight o'clock. We're also on every other Sunday at two o'clock in the afternoon. Next week, Hey Kesselu from Drone DJ is going to be on, and I know you guys will definitely enjoy him. Um, he is actually the one that broke the news on the Mavic Air. He had the first concrete news on that before even Osetalev did. So that's going to be a good show. Want to thank everybody for joining Drone Jock, um, everybody, um, Bill Thomas from Coast to Coast Drones, uh, Ronnie Drone Shots, Trevor, Rick Halber. Um, Steve Carpenter, Steve Cross. Uh, thank you guys all so much for showing up tonight and have a great rest of your evening.